All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in with me is another segment with one of our amazing speakers. I can't wait to introduce him to you. He has more than two decades of experience as a corporate leader. In addition to that, he is also an author, a public speaker, and a business mentor, helping entrepreneurs establish and digitalize their businesses. His mission is to help thousands of entrepreneurs shape and and operate online businesses as part of, his, of their portfolio career or as their main occupation. So with me today, I'm super excited to be talking about how to start businesses together with Mr. Sharam Maralani. Welcome, Sharam, to the show. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, and I'm really excited to, I know you have been in, in this space for about 20 years, right? Two decades. Can you please tell us, let's start with your story. Like what inspired you to do what you do today? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, actually, I work as I, uh, as you mentioned, in the corporate world, in different industries, primarily in uh, the industry of uh, assurance, which is about testing certification inspection and uh, I have been uh, two different roles actually I have been having business build business development uh, operation and management responsibilities uh, different angles of the business from business processes and systems to managing uh, customer relations uh, and also to managing teams of various sizes um, and that's my what I have been doing for more than uh, 25 years now uh, in parallel, since uh, 2014, I have started to study um, a lot about the online businesses, especially on the small, medium enterprise uh, domain, uh, because at the same time, the corporate world was paying more and more attention on the digitalization uh, in the business processes in larger companies. But what for me was interesting to also was what was going on in the uh, smaller size companies, even to the level of automation that some of the solo entrepreneurs could uh, benefit from. Mm -hmm. And uh, those studies uh, continues up until today. Then uh, to, uh, that's why uh, I uh, help also uh, entrepreneurs in their early stages when they are uh, doing ideation of new businesses or when they are starting to build businesses and also with designing the business processes and automations that smaller businesses need for sure in order to shape and thrive. Um, early days of uh, Corona pandemic, I, uh, of course we were home, then uh, it was also for me an opportunity to put part of that uh, knowledge into my first book, which I published uh, in order to help people who are in the very early stages understand what are the possibilities given what the technology and the business models that are known to some people quite well but not to everybody uh, it makes it possible mm -hmm. that's amazing so what should we i guess look out for let's say because you looks like you have worked with different size businesses for us small business owners what do we need to put in place like you said in terms of automations or how to set up systems for, for our operation? Yeah, I, I believe uh, there are usually three steps that in different companies talk about, and that is uh, maybe independent of the size of the business. Usually uh, you need to start to understand your business and understand its business process. When you say to a small business, understand your business, it may sound a bit uh, strange even that uh, I'm in this business. Or how, what does it mean? <laughs> how does that mean understand your business? Uh, let me give you an example. And that's not from a small business, but I think it uh, serves the purpose of defining what does it mean to uh, understand the business. Think of Uber as a huge business. Many people, if you ask the first reaction, if you ask people that what business is Ubering, of course, they say ride sharing or uh, ride hailing or taxi services. These are the type of words we see. But in reality, Uber is not in that business. Uber is in a software business because yeah. the importance of what you do, they do is their platform. And the proof for that is that when they decide to launch Uber Eats, for example, they use the same platform in order to launch that business. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting because sometimes when I'm thinking on a small business level, 
just on the products and services, but we're not really looking at the infrastructure of it or like how, how it's being delivered. In the sense you're talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, is Uber, it's, it's their delivery, it's their platform that people are actually using and taking advantage of. It's not the actual product of the ride or like getting takeout, right, that's as a product. Great. That's great. And then if you translate that to a small business, I think the same kind of thought needs to be used for a smaller business to understand what is really the core asset that uh, they have. Uh, you see more and more companies start to look into uh, taking a different part of the value the creation that they are in and perhaps outsource part of what they used to do as core part of their business. This could be an example of understanding the business, but also trying to find new ways in order to be even uh, more efficient or create new revenue streams or new type of customers and ecosystem that they are working in. Yeah, no, I love that you said that because what's really interesting when you say that Evolve is or new business is for us, for the longest time since the inception of our company, I mean, with my background and everything has always been um, consulting and, and business strategy, but what with what has evolved us into is more of really helping small business owners from the back end of things, meaning making sure that the automations are set up properly, the technology or the software, whatever that they want to use in terms of their part of their delivery system is, is being used or, or optimized. So more so is done for you services in addition to what used to be consulting, only consulting, and then they have to go out and, you know, vet a team that build the things or the systems for them. But now we actually support with having that done for you piece, both from the operational standpoint and also from a marketing standpoint. So um, yeah, no, it's, I think it's really interesting to look at your um, someone's business and really say, do I understand it in that way and, and what it is that we're looking to deliver to the customer. So um, I think for, for this conversation is definitely for those who um, have been in business for, for a couple of years or looking to ready to scale to that next level. So next would be, you said that the first step is to understand your business. What's the second step and the third step? The second step is to think what could you improve and automate? Yeah. Because when you understand your business, using the example that we were just discussing, that's when after you have decided this is really the core asset in my business and what we, I should for sure keep as my IP or as really the core value generator, which is bringing the customers to me, then it is about automation. Yeah. Imagine if a company like Uber would start to automate all sorts of maintenance services for their uh, taxis, which they are, it's not theirs, but Im just imagine, instead of thinking that the key for them is to improve the software day by day. A small company also should, after the first step, think about which are the areas that can be improvement in business and what parts can be automated. Uh, and if I may continue to the third step, the third step now is to outsource what you cannot automate. Mm -hmm. If you change this sequence of these three steps and do it perhaps maybe forget the first or second one in that sequence, I think you miss a lot of opportunity for having a better understanding of what part of value you really belong to, you want to be in, you like to perform, you help your customers, but also the part that you can automate, improve and automate yourself. And I believe the last part, of course, then would be much su more successful after those th two steps when you find the areas that you need to outsource. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit maybe the difficulty as the business grows because it, it's the right moment to decide when you want to outsource part of what you do for the business. Right. And, and I love it because, um, of course, when we talk about the first piece is, of course, automation, right? And then when we're talking about in the business, you have there are only three steps, really, we talk about is you either automate it, you delegate it, which is outsourcing it, or the last piece is you el eliminate it, you throw it away. <laughs> because no, if you, right, if you can't automate it, and you can't delegate it, perhaps it doesn't really mean or break the process because there's there's no need for it. Yep. So um, no, I, I, I love that. And so what's really interesting and what I really want to um, talk to you about, it's on the other side of yes, starting a business, maintaining the business, developing the business, scaling the business with automation and such. But what's interesting when you, got, you and I first met was your 
background, really understanding business so much to even prep it for the different seasons of the business. And what I want to specifically get into is obviously we just, I wouldn't say just getting out of the pandemic. It seems like we're still, uh, I guess, um, operating and managing through the repercussion of the pandemic now looks like we're heading into another, um, I guess, economic economic challenged um, part of of the whole I guess uh, I want to say um, I, I don't I, I can't even think of the word right now but in terms of the new um, landscape for when it comes to handling business so I know with your background can you talk a little bit about what to look out for in terms of the changes that are coming up and perhaps I don't know the talk about recession and etc like what are small businesses should be looking out for or should be thinking about right now? Yeah, I think it's a very good question and it's a very right moment to ask that question. Uh, I believe when I uh, wrote my first book, it was really the beginning of the COVID pandemic. If you have asked us a year before that, none of us would have believed that uh, what is really in front of us. Nobody had that idea. Even when that started in Asia, we sitting in US or Europe, we were thinking like, oh, we have seen this, perhaps it's a few months and it will go down. And it become it became March 2020 when all of a sudden over a week, our lives changed completely upside down. Yeah. Uh, same happens with the political scene you see now in the world. I mean, the, really the tensions around the world, I could not imagine that if you have asked me a year ago that something like that could have happened. Uh, for many years, I believe in the business schools, uh, in the business fora, and uh, in also smaller and larger organizations, we have always been hearing about, yeah, there will be difficult times. You need to prepare for difficult times. Now, last two, three years, we have been having episodes of difficulty hitting different types of the businesses quite frequently, I would say. And with what you see now happening in Europe and also the impact it has on the rest of the world, many of the reports, I am studying many of these reports and you, it's very difficult to find one is, which is a little bit maybe giving a positive uh, uh, forecast for the coming three to five years. Maybe things can go in a much more positive direction that we cannot be sure because even the most uh, successful and uh, capable uh, economists, they always see, of course, that there is a degree of risk. And I believe what we need to learn from the last three years is that we need to think of the business really with these new glasses. We need to always consider that the risks that in the past could sh- sit in our minds or in our systems, th- these days can over a month or, or over a week become reality. Now, what can a small business do? I think the number one is to be aware and to be really continuously understanding what is going around them. If you are in a local business, physical business, serving your market around you, you, I think it is not enough anymore to just understand what is happening with your competitors in the next door, in the next street, in perhaps at the province or state level or at the country level. You need to really understand what is your business environment and how that industry is shaping. Because imagine even some very local businesses got disrupted because of uh, perhaps the pandemic or if even before that because of technology uh, and that level of awareness almost like you are your own business consultant as a business owner that's becoming more and more important you need to read and study that may sound for a very traditional business uh, a big ask but i believe that's really core and i think for online businesses where they are operating on much wider geography usually in the whole country or even cross the borders, I think it's, it's becoming even more important to because with online businesses, with all the opportunities they bring, but at the same time, when the risk happens, maybe their main revenue source sits in a country far, far away from them. And understanding what is going on in those markets, which is bringing to them their customers is quite crucial. Uh, and stay realistic. I would say stay realistic. I lately wrote uh, an article about this and I'm really studying further and further because I believe coming years, one of the key uh, factors in the entrepreneurship world will be how you manage difficulty, how you manage the difficult times, how you navigate these difficulty. And I don't want to sound negative at all, but the business world has shown us lately that we need to stay realistic and understand. 
to the extreme of thinking, when is really the right moment to close that business or quit that business or pivot at least? Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask the startup ecosystems, the startups themselves, the business schools which are helping them, the facilitators which are helping the startups across US or other parts of the world, from the day one, startups have an exit strategy because a startup is not meant to be managed forever by the same people who are uh, starting it. I think that's quite a good uh, thought process that even an existing business should always have. Is the right moment for that business to do the next investment or maybe even prepare for a divestment down the line? Mm -hmm. uh, and that awareness about those changes is something that can prepare entrepreneurs to foresee what may come and then take necessary actions at the right moment. Mm -hmm. I think that what you said was really um, important, especially I think with any seasons of the business is being aware, right? Like what, what, of what is really going on with the market and really understanding their business, which is the first step, right? Like really understanding are that, are you, is your company ready to scale or is this company ready to um, expand or are you ready to outsource, et cetera? I think um, oftentimes just because in general, and I'm guilty of it too, that most entrepreneurs are very optimistic. And um, we may, I again, maybe perhaps I'm speaking for myself, but at least for those um, who get really excited and passionate about what we do. So we always scale sooner than we needed to scale. I know at least for me, right? I know like if we're scaling now, which is great, but we, we attempted that to be honest. And it's a true story. We attempted that six months ago, but we didn't have the people. Um, the infrastructure that we needed to scale. And we, we just had an idea and we thought it was a good idea because the online space is, is, is an opportunity for that and all of the things. But even so, just because you feel like it's time does not mean it's a right time. <laughs> and, and, and yes, and, and for us, we learn it the hard way, but that's okay. We learn a lot and good thing we were able to uh, manage manage the, the changes and 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 got the right people in and into place and things like that. But I think oftentimes is scaling sooner than than they are um, capable of. And I think that's really from just my experience. And most of the time, um, being overly optimistic with just having an idea and going out there. And if we build it, you know, you know, like people will come. It's actually not true these days anymore. You, if you build it, you actually have to market it and and you know advertise and and build community and put people behind it before anyone would know about it. <laughs> so that's great. That's great. Uh, I think just to uh, uh, confirm what you were saying and uh, maybe also mention an example that came to my mind. Uh, you can simply go and Google about statistics on how many web shops and online businesses started during the first three quarters of 2020. Just do the same search, but with negative keywords about how many online businesses and online shops have been closed during the last six months. Right. Then you understand that how something can be really growing fast and really shrinking in the opportunities that are possible because of simply market capacity in different uh, climates. And, and I believe this is not the end of it. I'm not an economist, but you, you, it's not difficult to read the forecasts of the various economists. After reading maybe five to 10 of them, you have an overview of what they are talking about. And none of them is showing that we are going to see easy times over coming years. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I mean, I, I, we hear about it all the time. Yes, I agree. There are opportunities, right? In, in, in bad time and downtime, absolutely. But of course, in general, it's definitely going to be more, more challenging than most. So I'm, I'm definitely still optimistic. There are going to be new ideas, new inventions, and you never know what's going to come out of all of this. Um, but definitely, I would say I, from hearing from your presentation so far is, um, what I'm hearing is definitely to be aware and to be more conservative than than um, I guess ever or expected because you just you just have to be I guess safe and be be ready for for the changes of what's coming our way. Right, absolutely. Uh, if I may perhaps uh, mention a tip, you would call it that small businesses can benefit from. In the larger businesses and in the corporate world, there is a methodology or there are more than one methodology in order to understand the structure of a business. 
And uh, one of them maybe is, uh, had, uh, many of your audience might have heard or even used it, and that's the business modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe if you look at uh, the most famous models of business modeling uh, practice, uh, mm -hmm. there are nine components, core components in every business. I think it is very important that uh, the business owners, solo entrepreneurs, small companies also understand that logic and have that in front of them. These days you can even buy, I saw the other day that on Amazon, you can buy business model canvas on a real canvas, a very large size that you can put on your, in your office on the wall or something. And there are a lot of questions under each of those nine boxes. It is important once in a while to look into those questions and try to answer. If you are a solo entrepreneur, answer it for yourself or ask your customers. If you are a smaller company, maybe sit together with your partners and uh, the team and try to answer some of those questions. And the answer to some of these uh, difficulties or also opportunities in good times may lie in one of the other boxes among the nine than the one that you think a lot about it. And I think that capability is really understanding that and benefiting from it is really a powerful mean to go to the next level of entrepreneurship. Yes, no, I love that. Um, yes, I definitely have seen and used um, business model canvas for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I heard about it a year into my business. I said, what, what is, no one taught me that. And it, surprisingly, I have a couple of clients who have um, gotten MBAs and they learn about business model canvas after. Them get receiving the MBAs. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit too late, I would say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I um, feel so, um, I want to say, knowledgeable now than uh, ever before. I think it's just great reminders for what we need to do um, as business owners and what we need to be aware of. Um, I'm really excited also, and thank you so much for ger your generosity. Um, you're giving a free copy of the online business um, build blueprint um, and other content on your website at sharammaralani.com. And of course, um, we'll have your link uh, on here, but us, everyone, the, um, the first and last name is here, which is his website information without the G. Um, that's how you can locate uh, the free copy of the blueprint. So thank you so much for your ge generous gift. And um, thank you so much for your time and uh, con your con contribution with helping us small business owners um, stay uh, successful and uh, thriving. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you very much.